Alrighty, today I'm going to be doing a little uh, coding uh, practice, a little demonstration here. Uh, I happen to be using the uh, TAMS Analyzer uh, Qualitative Research Program for Macintosh today. So those of you who use Apples can maybe learn something more than just kind of what we're talking about when we uh, uh, do focused coding. Now, as a little bit of review, we do a little bit of review here. Pause. Okay, coding. There's there's some different types of coding, and there, there was some types of coding that we had talked about earlier in some of the podcasts and in class. There's the general kind of open coding, uh, using the gerund ending, where you add the ing, so make sure that all your codes include some sort of an ing term. That'll kind of get at your active process <coughs> that's um, going on in your code. I, I like gerund endings, by the way. Then there's open coding using in vivo codes, and we talked about that um, <coughs> as having the various different types where there would be um, uh, some unique vernacular uh, that expresses a concept that's uh, particularly salient in the context that you're studying. Uh, uh, there's those kind of made up terms like truthiness, um, uh, other types of terms that people make up, <clears throat> or normal words or terms that get used differently in a certain context. We were talking about you know, things like going postal, those, those kind of things. Uh, uh, there's also coding from a predefined list. You know, so if you, if, you, if you kind of know what you're going to be looking for in your uh, research, you can kind of make a code list and then look for those things in your uh, uh, qualitative material. <clears throat> it kind of gets away from the grounded theory uh, or, or participant-based uh, or participant focused research uh, kind of is it's more literature focused or, or more theoretical focused um, but there's a way you can you can use a list uh, and that's called um, when you use coding that's derived from some earlier coding or some sort of a categorical coding so so say you you've gone through and and coded your uh, first um, several transcripts and then stopped <clears throat> and then developed a set of codes that are kind of uh, higher level codes. So you might combine codes like uh, uh, like running and jumping and um, jogging into a code called types of exercise or <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm losing my voice just a second Okay, I think I'm back. <clears throat> a little dysphonia there for a second. Um, uh, so it becomes a, a, a kind of a, a, a putting things into categories. When you when you when you see that, that your coding is starting to form categories right away, uh, and if you see that those categories kind of fit the broad idea of what you're looking for in your research, then you can speed up your research a little bit by uh, coding a small sample of your material, of the larger material, and then coding the rest of the sample, uh, rest of your transcripts and, and information based on that coding list. So I'm going to demonstrate that to you. Um, um, <clears throat> again, back to TAMS Analyzer. So anyway, I, I've, been, I've been going through and, and making some codes in um, uh, TAMS Analyzer. And um, so I, I came up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven codes. And and I haven't actually coded this entire transcript yet, but this is you know just an, an example. So I'm starting to, to see some themes. Okay. Uh, uh, this this uh, particular research had to do with the use of the sweat lodge by uh, Native Americans in a in a in an urban context uh, and. Uh, so, um, I've got some codes here. One of them is called the benefit, which has, which 
uh, actually I'll just take us on over to our, our code categories if I can find that so um, over here in our in our in our in our uh, main screen of the TAMS analyzer um, we've got you know a little bit of information about your project we've got the files that we've included you see we only have one so far uh, <clears throat> and then we've got a little search function and then a um, code definition and then uh, a tags and sets function that I'm not real familiar with yet um, it's a little bit different than the way that Atlas TI uses theirs. So anyway, um, we can go back and look at any of these codes anytime just by clicking on them. Contrasting Christianity. This code I use when the participant contrasts with Christianity or other religious ways. Uh, uh, healing. I use this code when the participant talks about things related to healing activities. And, uh, and so on. Tradition. Uh, little, I've got a thing up here for chit chat. This is just incidental socializing that has nothing to do with the content of the research. And depending on, on uh, <coughs> who supervises your research, um, uh, you want to you want to make or you may be supervising people that uh, are coding, and you may want to know when they just find irrelevant um, uh, artifacts in the in the data that you want to be able to code out. So. <coughs> Um, so anyway, we've done some, a few codes here. Um, I don't think I've used them all yet. Um, healing, praying, <coughs> um, uh, at that time they didn't have doctors like today. So you know, that was our way, their belief, and we still carry it out. So, so here we're talking about um, tradition. So we'll just apply that in code there. And using TAMS Analyzer, that's real easy to do. Um, uh, we do the same. The songs have been handed down. We're using it too. Some of the songs are sacred. Some stuff that we do, it's in there. It's sacred. <coughs> um, um, so again, we're talking about <coughs> tradition. Um, So we'll just highlight that and apply that code to there. Uh, let's find something a little bit different. Um, <coughs> still, still more stuff about tradition. <coughs> So here's here's a little um, uh, comment about uh, Christianity and the different denominations uh, that we want to include in the um, contrasting with Christianity. We just highlight the code and apply it. So uh, <coughs> so anyway, so we've got we've got a, f a few of uh, of uh, of um, Thing is coded, and, and now we need to add some other other uh, files to code. So let me go ahead and import a file here. Uh, I've got it up here on my desktop called RLH for the name of the person, and I'll import it. Um, and then I'll open that up, and there you can you can see that it has been imported, and I've got all all those same codes already put in there. So nice little feature. So. We've got this one other code here, which is in a Word file, so it's a little bit different form than what um, 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 TAMS will take. So uh, one can just simply open open up a new uh, file for the project, and I'm going to call this one. Uh, MS because that's the name of the of the person who's who's doing it, and that there's several types of file that one could use. This happens to be uh, just in rich text format. <clears throat> I'm going to say OK, and you can see what I come up with is a blank document. So all I'm going to do is come over to my Word file, Control All, con 
control or command A in um, in Macintosh. Uh, command C is copy, and bring it over here. And command V is paste. So I can get rid of this file and close it down. And we'll just save that. <coughs> Well, as you can see, that's pretty small text, so one of the things I like to do uh, is to select all the text and then just change my font to something that's a little bit um, more user-friendly. So it's still in uh, Times Roman. We'll make it bold. It's a little easier to see. We'll make it a little bit larger. Uh, yeah, it's too big. Uh, maybe it's not. Uh, and then we'll click OK. So there we've got the uh, um, the file, and um, <clears throat> so um, we'll just start with this one. Uh, so knowledge regarding the sweat lodge. Now this particular um, File was a, is, it's a little bit different than a um, an interview. This was something that this person had sent me through email. So um, <clears throat> maybe I want to make a new code called uh, uh, email and just hit save. So and that that means I want to make another new code called uh, interview. So that's going to define the types of, 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 of uh, uh, type of information, where I got that information from. So I can come up here to the to the top. There's the name of the um, the um, file, and I can just put in in, in a code up here called uh, email. So this was an email response. So. Um, Actually, I probably just wanted to, to highlight the whole thing and call it email. So that lets Tams know that that whole thing is a um, uh, an email response. Then um, when I go back over to uh, the first one, the GPP, I can just now call it interview, and so and we'll keep them separate that way. So. Uh, let me come in here. So now that I've, I've got my coding list, these, these are the codes that I'm going to use. I can start going down. So I've been participating. So this is some background. So this is a little bit of background chit chat. Do I do I need to know it? Probably. Um, uh, so this guy is talking about his tradition of of um, the sweat lodge, where he learned it from. Um, and on on back, he's he's talking about some things that have to do with substance abuse recovery, um, <coughs> and um, uh, oh, that happened to be my my uncle that he was working with. Yeah, it's a small world. <laughs> um, I digress. Um, so. He's talking about his 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 uh, the use of the sweat lodge in his own healing. So we'll just do that one healing, and um, and there's on and on and on intent of social work research. Um, so and there's more about healing here. Activities. It's going to relate to their um, traditions. Going back into 
more of um, the tradition of it in, in that particular part. Um, Okay, so there's there's a couple on, on, on the MS one, and we'll do the RLH one. So again, it was imported. The text is, is, is again, small. We can make that larger. Um, uh, just like we did the other one. Uh, open up our window a little bit larger. Uh, so we've already got our codes, and we can just go through and and code them, and so um, so here's some some background stuff about this person's tradition. Uh, some more stuff about his background there. Places in the world, you know, distracted. Um, okay, there's a whole section in there about, about how he learned it and the tradition of it. Um, power is always there. To sweat back home. Pray for your family. Pray for your health. So here, here we got an interesting place where we got. Uh, some discussion about health and healing on one hand, but we've also got information on praying. So it's sometimes you get two two things overlap. Um, um, go through there. Uh, so anyway, the whole idea of, of doing focus coding is that you go line by line. Um, uh, and uh, section by section, thought by thought, and, and find where that code uh, fits. Um, uh, so again, th this person is talking a lot about the tradition of, of um, doing the sweat lodge. Um, Life isn't perfect, blah, 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 traditional things. Again, he's, he's really talking about how important all this is to his tradition, in traditional ways. So anyway, that's enough for now. <coughs> uh, so one would just go through and, and include, um, uh, I hope I wanted to mark him as a as a uh, uh, an interview, control all, he, he was interview as was the other one. So you've got um, Got some of that stuff coded, and quickly I'm just going to show for the folks who use um, um, TAMS uh, what they can do with that. So if you put all your text over here in this search list, you can start to use the search search function, and uh, so you you can, for example, um, say you want to find when when there was healing involved. Uh, you pick one of your codes. You just hit search. You can make a file name or you can just make a temporary file and look at it and delete it. And it will go through and it will pull out in all your um, um, transcripts where you coded things healing. So say you want uh, something that is healing and 
what was it? Praying was the one we saw together. Well, we'll search for that. And see what we come up with. So here we come up with that. Remember that long interview, that long thing where there was uh, healing and praying going on? So we have that one here um, uh, by combining them. So th these are some tools that you can use inside of, of, uh, of TANS. There's also these tools in Atlas TI, but they're very different. Uh, so we'll just get rid of that. So. Um, so, so when we code from a list, it has many advantages. Um, <coughs> um, the most important, I think, being is that it speeds up your project. When you have a lot of stuff to do, you can work on a small portion of your qualitative data and, and then apply that code list to the rest of your data. Um, it also allows you uh, to more focus your interviews. So, for example, if you if you do several interviews and you and you um, code that code those interviews, and um, <coughs> uh, and then you go out to gather more data, you can be a little bit more directive and a little bit more precise in what you're looking for in your interviews. So it's, it's, it, it, it works kind of helps on both ends. So it allows you to contain your research, <coughs> meaning make a container uh, to, <coughs> excuse me, um, so you can, you can code data and that way you can you can for example omit data from the final analysis like I did with that code that I called chit chat uh, so I just wanted to code that there was some chit chat that went on that, that often goes on when you do an interview people want to kind of get get relaxed in talking to you particularly after you've turned the, the tape on um, or you can also uh, use the codes to differentiate between different classes of data like I did with the the interview-based transcripts versus the email uh, base, where the person just answered a questionnaire and sent back some information. Um, uh, you can also develop codes. I could have had a gender code. I could have had male, female, um, um, uh, tribe, in this case, um, uh, <coughs> student, uh, staff, uh, uh, type of codes because that because that project had had student staff uh, adjuncts so um, <clears throat> uh, and it can also be a part of grounded theory um, you know the, the tip the 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 um, classic grounded theory is is you go out you do a few interviews you start to develop codes and themes and then you, you your next interviews are more focused and more focused and more focused and it kind of quickly comes to a, a new theory about uh, uh, a human behavior uh, but most often these list coding types of things are used when there is some kind of a predefined theory or, or perhaps you had a very kind of structured uh, qualitative interview that you develop the codes Really, based on the interview, not on on the content. So maybe you're looking for certain certain responses to certain questions. Um, so so that's that's the, um, uh, the the kind of coding from a list. So you you could you could make you can make uh, codes that, um, um, uh, for example, uh, relate to a particular person. So if you have people in a focus group, for example, you can you could use just like you know Jill and Fred and Martha and uh, Juan uh, as codes to keep track of who is saying what, uh, if that's important. Um, they they may also be codes that uh, uh, that you want to develop that list the class of, of, of person you know they're a supervisor they're a, a uh, direct service worker they're a, um, a volunteer so so 
list coding is is is, is flexible in that regard. 